Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And last week, I played the most popular tanks in the game. How about I mix it up a little bit this week, and instead, I'm going to play the least popular tanks in the game. So, oh god, why did I decide to do this? I guess I'm going to start by playing the Churchill Gun Carrier. This tank has only been played 5,794 times on the entire European server in the last 30 days. Now, why is that the case? Well, that is the case because this thing is an absolute stinker inside World of Tanks. Seriously. This thing, it has no armor, although it does have a pretty good gun. No turret, no real flexible gun with regards to that. Its camera rating isn't even that good. And it's incredibly slow as well. This vehicle is so much of a meme on stream that I decided to put my unicorn in this tank to see if I could possibly actually not suck and do well. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the battle with the Churchill Game Carrier. Oh, why do I even do this to myself? Oh, okay. Well, we've actually got quite a nice matchup here. Some pretty nice matchmaking. Lakeville is actually pretty snazzy. It was just a couple of days ago that I featured a replay on this channel where the player in question managed to absolutely dominate in albeit a tier 3 tank destroyer with lots of view range. Am I going to try and do the same thing here? Probably. When I play Lakeville in a tank destroyer, it's always interesting about where you should initially go. And so for me personally, I'm going to go and try and sneak into the into the, the central position here. But I don't want to do it too long in the game. Now, when you use that position, you've always got to be very careful with the kind of view range that the enemy team will have. And I see a tier 2 reward vehicle on the enemy team, the T-52. Luckily, that doesn't have the most exceptional view range these days, unlike what it used to have back in the day. Uh, so it probably won't be able to catch me out too much. I see three artillery on the enemy team as well. That is going to make me wince if I get spotted in this absolute slug of a tank. Nevertheless, I'm going to take a risk. We're going to risk it. We're going to go into the middle of the map. We're going to set up maybe in these bushes. And we're going to try and activate our binoculars. And hopefully we'll be able to clap something without losing all my health. This is a very obvious bush, by the way. So I would warn you that if you try and do this uh, towards the higher tiers of World of Tanks... It's quite likely that somebody is going to blindfire you. And even at this kind of like mid-tier of tier 5 and 6, it's still quite likely the enemy team are going to blindfire me here. But oh, there we go. It's a Churchill. All right, you'll see that we have to turn our tanks so much. But there we go. Whoa. Do you know what the best thing is about playing one of these absolutely atrocious tanks? Is that every time you hit something, it feels like a little, a little award. Penning something with a Churchill gun carrier is is kind of like almost killing an entire tank in an Object 279E. It's just I think people are going to be more surprised when it happens in this vehicle. Okay, so I don't really feel comfortable staying there anymore. None of my tanks decided to take the town, and so instead I'm going to have to fall back. Take a look at the OI Experimental and try to argue with the Japanese heavy tank which vehicle looks more stupid inside the game. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my way over here, try and find a bush that's near this building, and then hopefully try and get some view range down this alleyway to start to maybe catch any of my opponents that are going to, to go that way. Unfortunately, there don't seem to be many bushes here. Uh, so that is a little bit awkward. I always thought there was a little bit of a bush on this building, but it looks like it's only from the other way. And if I get caught out here, I'm going to be in an absolute state. All right, you know what? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull back into this bush and then try and use that bush to be able to shoot through this alleyway. You'll see just how important bushes are for a big, fat, stinky tank like this. Luckily for me, now that the Skoda T25 is down there, that actually means that I don't really have to worry too much about the vehicles using the low ground, because if they use the low ground, I won't be able to see them, and as soon as they crest the ridge and spot me there, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. My main vulnerability from this position is if one of the enemies decides to go through the middle, but I guess that Skoda with his position, he'll probably see the tanks before they decide to crest there. So be careful in this position as it's a little bit vulnerable. So the Churchill Game Carrier. This vehicle has one of the worst win ratios, I'd say, of any tank inside the game. And it's because at tier 6, there are vehicles like the SU-100. Can you honestly believe this thing is actually at the same tier as something like an SU-100? That tier 6 Soviet tank destroyer with 
the option of having a 122mm main armament is absolutely disgustingly efficient when it comes to ripping apart its opponents. Oh my lord, talk about ripping apart its opponents. I might even get a little bit of a whiff on this Churchill in a second. I'm beginning to think that after a couple of shots, I probably need to fall back here. But ooh, did you see that? That was pretty vicious against the Churchill there. But unfortunately, the trees are kind of stopping my vision. Um, I, I guess because the Skoda is there, if I pull back behind the bushes, I can probably still shoot through them. Uh, the trees are quite thick in this location. I'm hoping the Skoda is going to spot for me, but whether he does or not is another question. Come on, Mr. Skoda. Give me a little bit of vision. Looks like the artillery are trying to shoot him, meaning he's still spotted. Is he spotted from the middle? Is he spotted from the side? I can't advance down there. If this thing gets lit up in the open, it's only got 730 hit points. The Cromwell is going to devour me in probably about 15 seconds, and that's if none of the other vehicles manage to hit me as well. They've also got an Su-85 who was last spotted at the G0 area over there who's likely to make his way round. Realistically, in a tank like this, this is your best possible option. Get a gun rammer, get binoculars, and either get vents or a turbo, depending on how you like to play, and then hope that the enemies drive into your line of fire. I know it's not the most sassy World of Tanks gameplay, but it's pretty much what the Churchill game carrier is all about. So I was thinking about getting that Panther M10 there, but I was unable to be able to catch him. The Super Chaffee's actually pushed forwards into a part where I probably don't even need to spot for myself because the Super Chaffee's going to spot for me. It's interesting that this Panzer IV got ripped apart as easily as he did. Maybe that was the M10 managing to catch him out with vision in the center of the map. I actually have an OI experimental who we 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 had a little bit of a a little bit of a beauty pageant with earlier on. And now he's kind of just chilling in that position. This is where I'm hoping that my binoculars are going to be useful. And you can see that the Panther M10 actually manages. Oh, oh, oh no, how does that even miss? Oh no, I got a dead driver. Everyone's ripping apart my hit points. This is where you've got to be careful. So I'm going to say that I actually made a bit of a misplay there. What I should have done... Hey, it's blind fire, the Churchill. No, what I should have done is waited till the M10 moved. Because if the M10 moved then he wouldn't have had his binoculars activated. And if he doesn't have his binoculars activated, then he's not actually going to manage to see me. Luckily, we've managed to at least get rid of one of the heavies. We know there's an Su-85 there. Our Super Chaff is just chilling. Our Su-85's also chilling. And we're six minutes now nearly into this game, and the enemies look like they're no closer to actually attacking us. Well, to be fair, I'm the one who's camping in base, right? The enemies have taken 70% of the map. But when you're playing this thing, you really don't have too many options. Going forwards in a vehicle like this with its absolute tragic armor and huge profile, it's probably one of the easiest things in World of Tanks to actually be able to go through. The armor is really awkward to a point where if a kv2 on the enemy team even catches a glimpse of this thing it practically loses all of its hit points immediately okay so i'm hoping that the super chaff is going to go and um, have a little bit of a look for where the enemy team is it's actually still a close game we're only up by 300 hit points so i don't want to lose them we can see what happens to the oi experimental so when i fire here i'm gonna have to pull back behind the bush when I was shooting in that Panther M10, I should have actually just reversed behind the bush as well and he probably wouldn't have been able to see me. But I don't know, when you've got, actually got an opportunity to be able to shoot something in an absolute stinker of a tank like this, you feel like you've almost got to jump on every opportunity that you can to be able to get your shots in. Alright, so that M10 is, is rubbing it in to the OI Experimental considering he's died. There's a Hellcat who seems to be locked in mortal combat with the VK3601. I'm wondering if I can go and make my way down that alleyway and possibly hit that Hellcat. This vehicle's actually got fairly good gun depression, as you can see. It's one of the actual saving graces of the vehicle. It's just a shame that the forehead or the superstructure of the vehicle is so much higher than the gun that whenever you use this gun depression, your opponents are still going to easily be able to catch you anyway. All right, you know what? I don't really feel like the enemies are going to be attacking here. I'm thinking about just going and setting up so I can maybe get a line of fire towards the Hellcat, but considering that my artillery can't even hit the Hellcat, what kind of hope is there for the Quacky Baby to even be able to catch the Hellcat himself? I don't think it's really going to happen, or maybe it is. Our artillery finally actually manages to catch a glimpse at the Hellcat. Alright, you know what the real mystery man is on the enemy team? It's the T-52. Okay, artillery proves me wrong. It's quite funny that the artillery is actually called Rage Sector on my team. You know, artillery fire sector based causes the enemy to rage or even just rages themselves. I don't even know. The OI says super go scouting. Well reported. 
Good job. All of the heavies seem to be rather upset. Oh, no, never mind. That wasn't actually even sarcasm. Ragnvar on our team cheers on his own artillery for having dealt with the Hellcat. I will help you, Ragnvar. We can do this. Come on, we've got this. Yeah, we're teammates. We're buddies. We're brothers in arms. We will handle all of these tanks one by one by one. And I will win a game in one of, no, actually, the least popular tier six and higher tank in the game. I can't believe how little this is played. It's, it's, it practically has all of the aspects from my video the other day, which was about the FCM 36 pack 40, i.e. with it being no fun to play, but just has none of the overpowered advantages. <laughs> That's pretty much what you get when you play this tank. You have a terrible vehicle, you do practically nothing, but you have a uh, you have all of the horrible disadvantages that, that come with the vehicle, but maybe I kill an artillery. I mean, what was I actually even hoping for? Let's be honest, I'm playing a, a Churchill gun carrier. Um, yeah, 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 you've suffered through nine minutes of playing this absolute stinker of a tank. And then you don't even get the artillery reward at the end. Well, at least the, uh, the super chappy did. Okay, okay then. Churchill game carrier. Fun, 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 fun. At least, you can try and trick yourself into thinking it's fun, right? Next up, we're going to be changing tank types, but staying at the same tier. And we're going to be playing in the American T-21 light vehicle, of which there have been 18,000 games in the last 30 days. So, yeah, I played a terrible tank, and I had a, an equally pretty terrible result with my 700 damage dealt, but at least well played to the other tanks on my team that weren't quite so useless for managing to take it down. I think we might be starting to possibly see a pattern here of why these vehicles maybe are not very well, aren't played very often. But then again, when we take a look at the uh, the T21, this vehicle actually has a really good win ratio of just under 52% average. How beautiful is that? Maybe this is going to be one of the better vehicles of the least popular tanks played. I guess one of the reasons why the T21 isn't so popular is because it's obviously now a a um, collector's vehicle. It's a collector's tank, so you don't actually have to play it. In fact, all of the vehicles that are least played are collector's tanks, because you don't even have to play them. Well, at least most of them. Spoilers for one that might be coming up in a second or so. But I think the reason why is because it's just... Nobody really wants to play Tier 6. And people who do want to play Tier 6 are probably going to choose to play something like a Type 64. All of the gameplay that you're going to see in this tank you could basically do way, 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 way better and also make more credits for playing in the uh, Type 64 instead. Uh, that's interesting. Have I just actually managed to disconnect while I'm recording the video? Well, that's actually pretty bizarre because I'm actually re recording this locally. Oh my lord, that was some serious lag. Goodness gracious, World of Tanks server, what are you doing to me? Well, thank goodness that happened early on. Usually when I'm streaming and that happens, I look and I see that I'm... Uh, if it's my connection, then obviously I've dropped. But luckily, uh, I didn't actually drop the connection there. So I, 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 well, I guess I did, but I didn't because I'm recording this one. So we don't have to worry about that. And way, take it, Frenchie! Oh no, we missed the kill! Hellcat secured it though, nice. And immediately we're looking at the T21 as actually being quite a fun little voracious vehicle. So I'm looking at the DPM that this tank has. 1,642 is not very impressive. But this is the same kind of gun that you would get, I believe, on the EZ-8. Uh, so to have the same gun that a tier 6 medium tank uses at tier 6 light tank is actually pretty cool. I'm firing at that bush to see if there's anyone up there and it doesn't look like there is. I've got to be careful though because there could be a wide variety of tanks in these positions. Oh, I could so easily get caught out in this scenario, but, um, sod it. Let's just do it live. That's, that's the whole point of this video, right? As I missed my T21 shot, that wasn't good. Second one goes in. Did I knacker his engine? What's that Panzer IV doing behind me? Oh, let's fall back. No, schmaltern! There's a Nazhorn up there. 
All right, do you know what I'm going to do? Uh, no, I'm actually going to turn around. No, I'm not, because the, uh, the... I'm going to tank a shot from the Panzer IV, but hopefully get a superior position here. That feeling when you think you have better DPM than a medium and you realize you kind of don't. Luckily, he fired there, though. So, man, this gun handling isn't very good unless you're using vert stabs, but I'm using uh, vents, gun rammer, and coated optics on this tank to maximize the DPM. I guess other ways that you could use to play this vehicle, you could get the camo module, maybe you could use the vert stabs instead of the rate of fire, but I feel like on a vehicle like this, you still need to be very aggressive. And oh my lord, we're starting to realize why this vehicle actually seems to do pretty darn well with regards to its win ratio. It's actually pretty voracious. Two minutes into this game and it's already over. Ah, ha, ha. And for you too, Mr. RT. Yeah! Nice. Our second kill of the battle. Hopefully now we can manage to get this KV-2 as well. Is he AFK or is he role-playing artillery? I think that's exactly what he's doing. You see, he's sticking his gun up in the air, not because he's giving up or because he's AFK. He's just imagining what it would be like if you could fire up and then gravity actually worked on the shells more and you could manage to bombard the enemy artillery in the base. That would be good. Maybe that's what they need to do with the KV-2 now that they've nerfed the high explosive rounds. Give it like an indirect fire looping mechanism. Although for that, you'd really have to lower the shell velocity. Spoilers, some of the lower shell velocity tanks in World of Tanks are actually disgustingly good at being able to loop their shells over ridgelines. I'm looking at you, low-tier British derpy tanks. Talking about derpy tanks, this T-150 is actually pretty healthy. I'm quite glad that I didn't just kind of go in the cap circle or go AFK in this game. Because look, I'm going to be able to get in and get another couple of shots in for the T-21. And considering what a crappy game I had in the Churchill game carrier, I'm happy for that one. Ah, there we go. T-21. Nice. Pretty good result here. 1,300 damage. It's not great with a couple of kills for this tank. But I didn't think that the game was going to go as quickly. I can't believe that this tank isn't played more. This is actually genuinely quite a good little vehicle. I guess it's just not played because it's been out of the game for, for quite a while inside the collection. And I think there were other ways to be able to progress. I think it was an optional route upside the tech tree. So maybe a lot of people just didn't even bother to have them in their garages in the first place. But yeah, all right. We managed to get ourselves a good chunk of experience there. That will help with our field mods. 1,300 damage and 791 base. Got a pretty tricky decision with this vehicle with regards to the field mod that I would want to take. Either I can limit my vehicle down to 55 and have a significantly better power to weight ratio or I can increase the top speed limit to 59. I personally am going to go for the power to weight ratio on this vehicle and the reason why I'm doing that is because I feel like this tank is more of a little bit of a brawler rather than something that wants to try and race into position to try and get those early spots. I think it's all about the damage in this tank and that's the way that I'm going to play it. So by increasing our power to weight ratio we could go forwards and backwards faster, accelerate and it will even help our traverse speeds a little bit although the traverse speeds are already really good on this tank. Okay so let's pick our next tank and look while the kv-13 and the firefly are in theory next on this list i am seeing a tank and i cannot honestly believe there is a tier 10 vehicle that is the fifth least played tank tree tank and that's still in the tech tree it's not even a collector's vehicle like all of these other vehicles apart from the a44r it completely baffles me that there would be a tier 10 tank destroyer in the game that has so few games played. Nearly half of the battles played of the worst tier 10 tank, all in all, the Rheimatal Sheridan. Sorry, did I just say Rheimatal Sheridan? Although, let's be honest, both of them are packing exactly <laughs> as bad of a win ratio of 46.63 in the last 30 days. And so why don't I play a game in the, uh, the WZ113 then? Because I can tell you this vehicle might actually kind of surprise you with what it's capable of doing. It's actually got really thick frontal armor. It's not the slowest thing you'll ever play, especially if you put a turbo on it and you manage to use a combat course to be able to improve the traverse speed of the vehicle. And it's got that full-blooded tier 10 tank destroyer gun. I think this 113 is actually pretty darn decent. Although I, I tell you one thing, uh, this map isn't darn decent. I'd say this is probably one of my least favorite maps in the game because I hate having to commit to the different flanks. 
I know that sounds like such a, a crybaby answer or whatever, right? Oh, I hate having to commit to a flank. Well, that's what the game is meant to be about. But I think it's more of a case of once you've committed to a flank, it's almost impossible to be able to get back to defend your base if one of the other flanks has fallen. And so it kind of forces you more often than on a lot of maps inside the game to have to kind of sacrifice your impact in the battle, your damage, your spotting, your kills, to be able to kind of cover other people's slack. And now, you know, I, I guess that was featured a little bit in last week's video, right, in the Leopard, where I was shooting into the back of the mouse and I was thinking, oh, do you think that I have time to be able to get a couple more shots off or do I have to go back to be able to protect the cap circle? And that's one thing when you're playing a tank like a leopard that can go 65, 70 kilometers an hour. But it's another thing when you're playing a vehicle like this that without the turbo is kind of limited to about 35. We're actually getting up to 41 kilometers an hour here. The WZ-113GFT is is making its way towards the front, kind of breakneck, break, uh, breakneck speed even. All right, so this is always an interesting moment about where the enemies decide to go. And I'm seeing that the T-125 is actually turning to make his way up the hill. And so what I'm going to do is try and get up into that position and possibly be able to shoot down on them. I feel like this map is all about controlling the central location that you see me going towards here. Because if you do, that allows you to shoot across to the north. It also allows you to engage towards the south. And it obviously allows you to just win the middle. Whenever I'm playing on maps that have multiple flanks... If I can go into a single position that allows me to influence multiple flanks, then for me that sounds like the best option that I could possibly ever make, right? Alright, so in this scenario, my only concern is that the south is not really protected at all, and that the enemies could manage to push through there. Another thing you've got to be careful of on this map is when you try and push around this corner that the tank destroyers don't engage you from up there. But, considering that the gorillas are in a platoon, I bet you the other gorilla is with the other, the other gorilla. Oh, here we go, tier 10 tank destroyer gun. I'm not very lucky during these live replay videos, am I? No, no, Mr. QB, you're not very lucky. We, we've noticed these things. All right, so I don't want to get tracked here. I don't want to get caught. Luckily, my armor holds up. And boom, baby, there we go. 675 damage dealt to the IS-7. And this is where this tank's DPM actually can be really nice. Why are you all driving around the corner completely sideways? It makes it incredibly awkward to play a tank destroyer right now. Can, could we not, sir? There we go. E5. Oh, can you can you not could could you not drive out sideways, please, buddy? What are you? Why are you? Why, can we? Uh, I can't, I don't have a turret like you do, my friend. Are you getting in my way now? Okay, bro. Okay, bro. Come on, come on, come on, Mr. Centurion. What are, what are we playing at? What are we playing at? Uh, I, I I I wonder if he's actually trolling me a little little bit here. Okay, I'm just gonna ignore it. Be the bigger baby. Hopefully get the shot on the IS-7. There you go, Centurion. Now you can finish him off. There you go. You got him. You got him, bro. There you go. You even got a kill and everything. How many times is this guy going to bump into me? Please, can I have the turret is the way that I feel right now. Okay, so in this situation, I'm a little bit concerned at the fact that there could be medium tanks or even a self-propelled gun that's going to shoot into the back of my vehicle. But really, how much can you worry about it? Okay, so you're getting to see that this vehicle, it's not super slow. It's got a pretty nice pokey gun. And also, hopefully, we can show the HE rounds to be able to get the crown fire. But never mind! Diabolo, or the anonymized name Diabolo, in the Centurion Action 10 is actually going to get the shot in. And this is where this tank is just a little too slow to be enjoyable. Notice how every single other vehicle is managing to get round quicker than me, even though I am using a turbo on this tank. I'm actually going to change to a heat round here in case I have to shoot the 100. Uh, because I can tell you that 395 millimeters of heat pen is going to do disgusting things to that vehicle. And that's right, this thing does get 395 heat. Spoilers, it works. So this vehicle, it, with its lower plate being so good, look at that. Bounces a heat round off the top of my tank and... Oh, I nearly got his weak point. Ah, ah, ah. Is that my second T-125 of this game? It could be, unless I mega low rolled the first shot on the T-125. Uh, looking at it, I probably killed the other T-125. And so look at that! 2,700 damage in a couple of kills. Look, it's not the best result we've ever had in our lives, but at least it's not sitting around waiting in the Churchill game carrier for so long. Okay, what is this Bat Chat doing? Do you think the Bat Chat is going to turn and make his way back to base, or do you think he's going to try and flank or... Oh, oh hello. I think he's going to fall back, or is he just going to all in the Progetto? 
oh, mate, why you have to do this? Why couldn't you come towards me? Give me all those juicy hit points. Well, to be fair, it looks like he's actually pressuring the Progetto, who may be caught reloading. Oh, never mind, the Progetto wasn't reloading. And it doesn't look like his friends are going to be... Well, my friends are going to be... He's not going to be living long against my friends, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so with the bat chat shut down, I feel like I'm just doing these incredible long loopy plays on this blooming map once again. I didn't really get the opportunity to truly show you this vehicle as a frontal assault tonk, right? I actually got spotted, which means there's probably like a manticore up there. So I just fire with a shell at him. Probably shouldn't be reloading a high explosive round, even though the high explosive rounds are so lovely on this tank. Wow, the I-7 actually completely messes up the shot there. So, will I mess my shot up? I don't think so. There we go. Oh, he thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Literally just... I'm so triggered by my team. I really am. I really am, Mr. IS-7. I am very triggered about, like, there I was, fully aiming the shot, and then IS-7 is like, oh, I bump you. To be fair, I don't think he did it intentionally. I kind of maybe just stopped at an awkward position. So he was probably aiming as well. He was probably just aiming as well. Nevertheless, we managed to do 500 damage to the Manticore at the end of the battle. And three kills in. Not too bad for the least popular tier 10 tank by far. And there we go. That was apparently better than 95% of players who have played this vehicle in the last week, which is quite surprising for me because, it, it, let's be honest, it wasn't a glorious battle. But yeah, 3,200 damage and 993 base experience. Nothing really to, to write home about, but it, it was an all right result for this tank. And while in some ways I'm a little bit surprised that the WZ-113G doesn't get more gameplay, especially considering that the 111 GFT at tier 9 I'd say is one of the best tank destroyers tier for tier in the game uh, let's be honest you'd have to be a little bit of a weirdo to not want to go and get yourself an object 268 version 4 which is probably why people don't bother with the 113 GFT because there's a Soviet version of the tank that is really more fun to play although this 268 version 4 it has much worse ammunition Less alpha damage, much worse DPM, worse accuracy, the list goes on. But the amount of armor and mobility that this vehicle has and its ability to be flexible in the game and even ram things, yeah, it's no comparison. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, those were the least popular tech tree tanks in the last 30 days. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And are you surprised that so few people are playing these tanks? Do you have them in your garage and you actually quite enjoy their gameplay and take them out on the battlefield? And what vehicle surprises you that is not on this list? And however, keep in mind that I was looking only at tier six and above. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.